Hayodia is uniquely different from any other Ediacaran fossil so far discovered in that it consists of bundles of fibers that have been identified as muscles. The entire body is in a broadly fourfold symmetrical arrangement. Thus, the overall body organization conforms to the key features of modern Cnidarians. It is a soft-bodied animal having an appearance of a smooth discoidal structure connected by a relatively short stem to a quadrate body comprising numerous and regularly aligned linear fibers. The fibers extend laterally across the body, linking adjacent corners. Cnidarian's distinguishing feature is cnidocytes, specialized cells that they use mainly for capturing prey. Their bodies consist of mesoglea, a non-living jelly-like substance, sandwiched between two layers of epithelium that are mostly one cell thick. Favocytes is an extinct genus of tabulate coral characterized by polygonal closely packed coralites. The walls between coralites are pierced by pores known as mural pores which allowed transfer of nutrients between polyps. They thrived in warm sunlit seas, feeding by filtering microscopic plankton with their stinging tentacles and often forming part of reef complexes. Tabulate corals like Syringopra are almost always colonial, forming colonies of individual hexagonal cells known as coralites defined by a skeleton of calcite, similar in appearance to a honeycomb. Adjacent cells are joined by small pores. They lived entirely during the Paleozoic, being found from the Ordovician to the Permian. Halocytes colonies range from less than 1 to tens of centimeters in diameter, and they fed upon plankton. Their distinguishing feature is their well-developed horizontal internal partitions within each cell, but reduced or absent vertical internal partitions. Goniophyllum is easily identified by its lids and distinct square shape. Its coral light is simple and square shaped. Growth segments are clearly visible. The calyx is deep with weak septa, but some are thicker and more distinguished than others. Caninia was marine in nature and known to live in lagoon-type ecosystems. Because of the shallow water in which it lived, it was often affected by processes above the water level, such as storms. Colonies of boulder star coral usually form massive clumps with uneven surfaces, but sometimes forms plates, and in shady positions, may be encrusting. The individual animals are known as polyps and have a cylindrical body crowned by an oral disc in which a mouth is fringed with tentacles. Although some stone corals are solitary, these are colonial. The founding polyp settles and starts to secrete calcium carbonate to protect its soft body, The shape and appearance of each coral colony depends not only on the species, but also on its location, depth, the amount of water movement and other factors. Many shallow water corals contain symbiont unicellular organisms known as zoosantheli within their tissues. These give their color to the coral which thus may vary in hue depending on what species of symbiont it contains. Cauliflower coral is a hermaphrodite and each polyp contains four sets of male and four sets of female gonads. The larvae develop inside the body of the polyp and are not expelled into the water until they are mature. They remain free swimming for a number of weeks before settling and starting to build a hard matrix. The polyps feed by capturing tiny prey with their tentacles. They also contain zoosantheli, microscopic algae, which are able to photosynthesize. 
These symbionts produce energy-rich compounds which the polyps metabolize while the rigid structure of the shallow water coral provides a stable, well-lit, protective environment for the algae to flourish. Acropora globiceps occurs in small digitate colonies consisting of compact branches. Its coralites are of no specific size, specimens on slopes of reefs have had tube-shaped coralites, and specimens on reef flats have had coralites built into the branches. Corals are threatened by many factors like climate change including ocean warming and acidification, diseases, habitat degradation, land-based sources of pollution, small population size, unsustainable fishing. Elkhorn coral have special algae living in their tissues known as zoosanthelae. Zoosanthellae meet their nutritional requirements using photosynthesis, a process that converts carbon dioxide and water into sugars and oxygen. Elkhorn coral can also use filter feeding techniques to obtain food. At night, elkhorn coral use their tentacles to snatch free-swimming zooplankton from the water. Characteristically found in shallow, turbulent water ranging from 1 to 5 meters, Elkhorn coral thrive best in high-energy zones where wave action is frequent. This success is because wave action increases fragmentation, which allows more new colonies to form. Pillar coral is a slow-growing, long-lived species. A number of columns grow up from a basal plate, if the whole colony is dislodged and topples over, new cylindrical pillars can grow vertically from the fallen coral. Some specimens have been found where this has happened more than once, and the history of the colony can be deduced from its shape. Each pillar coral clonal colony is either male or female, an evolutionary life history strategy described as gonochoric. However, hermaphroditic events have been recorded for the species. Unlike other cnidarians, Anthozoans like anemones entirely lack the free-swimming medusa stage of the life cycle, the polyp produces eggs and sperm, and the fertilized egg develops into a planula that develops directly into another polyp. The tentacles of snake locks anemone are usually a deep green color with purple tips, the green color is often attributed to the presence of symbiotic algae within the tentacles but is actually the result of the presence of green fluorescent protein. Frilled anemone is a predator and catches small organisms floating past in the current. Its diet largely consists of copepods and larvae. It can increase its numbers by asexual reproduction. An individual can undergo binary fission by splitting in half and growing into two organisms. Or it can develop buds which grow into new individuals before becoming detached. Fragmentation, also known as basal laceration, is another mechanism by which the number of individuals can be increased rapidly. A typical sea anemone is a single polyp attached to a hard surface by its base. The polyp has a columnar trunk topped by an oral disc with a ring of tentacles and a central mouth. Dahlia anemones live attached to rock on the seabed from the lower tidal limit down to a depth of 100 meters and also attached to other organisms. Their diet comprises small fish and crustaceans, which they immobilize by firing groups of stinging cells into them. Beadlet anemones can live in solitary or in aggregations. Solitary ones are found to be larger size than those that form clustered aggregation. Furthermore, larger sea anemones were found submerged in low tide, where they have greater access to food resources and are less subjected to harsh environmental exposures. The size of beadlet anemones may be connected to their physiological adaptation in regards to limited food resources and withstanding environmental conditions.
Venus flytrap sea anemone is a passive suspension feeder, and orients itself on its often slender column so that it faces the upwelling current. Its petal disc is small, and its tentacles are short compared to the large, concave oral disc, which is funnel or mushroom-shaped. It extends its tentacles in two rows, one reflexed back and one sloping forward, and collects food particles as they drift past. This sea anemone is found in muddy situations at bathial depths in deep water canyons in the Gulf of Mexico. The majority are mainly sessile, attaching to a hard surface with their petal disc, and tend to stay in the same spot for weeks or months at a time. Free anemones are typically predators, ensnaring prey of suitable size that comes within reach of their tentacles and immobilizing it with the aid of their nematocysts. The prey is then transported to the mouth and thrust into the pharynx. The colonies of dead man's fingers are nearly always either male or female, although a small number of hermaphrodite colonies are found. The polyps feed at various times of the day with their tentacles extended. They are suspension feeders gathering plankton from the water with the help of cilia, and absorbing oxygen at the same time. Fertilization takes place externally and the embryos float for a few days before developing into free-swimming larvae. Most of these soon settle on a suitable substrate and new polyps develop but a few may remain in the zooplankton for some time and disperse over a wide area. Colonies have been known to live for 20 years. Red corals have the shape of small leafless bushes and grow up to a meter in height. Their valuable skeleton is composed of intermeshed spicules of hard calcium carbonate, colored in shades of red by carotenoid pigments. In living specimens, the skeletal branches are overlaid with soft bright red integument, from which numerous retractable white polyps protrude. Intensive fishing, particularly in shallow waters, has damaged this species along the Mediterranean coastline, where colonies at depths of less than 50 meters are much diminished. The skeleton of the Venus sea fan is composed of calcite and a collagen-like substance. Embedded in this are the coral polyps, each of which is a filter feeder and extends its eight tentacles to catch plankton drifting past with the current. The tissues contain symbiotic dinoflagellate algae symbiodinium which are photosynthetic and use sunlight to create organic carbon compounds which are then available to the host coral. The polyps of the regal sea fan extend their tentacles to feed and gather plankton and small organisms from the surrounding water. It is part of a biodiverse reef community. Amphipods are often found climbing on the branches which provide them with an elevated position from which to feed. The polyps are white and project in alternate rows from slit-shaped openings in hemispherical calices on the branches. Each polyp can retract into its calyx and has eight pinnate tentacles and eight mesenteries dividing the body cavity. The earliest accepted fossils of sea pens are known from the Cambrian-aged Burgess Shale. While generally sessile animals, sea pens are able to relocate and re-anchor themselves if need be. They position themselves favorably in the path of currents, ensuring a steady flow of plankton, the sea pen's chief source of food. The sea pen's ability to be clumped together in spatially unpredictable hinders sea stars' predation abilities. When touched, some sea pens emit a bright greenish light, this is known as bioluminescence. They may also force water out of their bodies for defense, rapidly deflating and retreating into their peduncle. The orange sea pen feeds on plankton which it catches with the tentacles on its feathery plumes. 
It orients itself at right angles to the current and can relocate to a new location if it wishes. Breeding takes place when eggs and sperm are produced by the autozooids and expelled through the mouth into the water column. The planula larvae drift as part of the plankton before settling on the seabed and undergoing metamorphosis. The newly formed juveniles are the founding primary polyps of new colonies. Firework anemones feed on planktonic arrow worms. They cannot feed on larger prey items due to their weak nematocysts. No information is recorded as to the lifespan of firework anemones or their larval dispersal. They are considered to have a restricted dispersal potential, and are therefore at risk from habitat degradation. The firework anemone is not asexual, female eggs are released by the stimulation of male gametes. The biggest threats to the firework anemone are trawling and dredging for scallops, both of which disturb the mud substrate and can potentially damaging the anemones.